team, we have with us in the studio Dr. Obadiah Melafia, who is a development economist and also a former deputy governor at the Central Bank of Nigeria. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you so much, Maupe. Thank you for having me. Well, now again, we have this debate over, um, you know, who really has the power of the purse, so to speak. Every yes. time the executive sends in a budget, it never really comes out how it was sent in. And oftentimes there is always a hike, which is a point of controversy for mm. the National Assembly and the executive arm of government. Yes. Uh, do you want to give your immediate thoughts on what, you know, on the controversy that arises each time? Yes. Actually, I was listening to, just before we just started, I was listening to Honorable Dogara, mm. a brother of mine, and I just totally disagreed with him. Uh, that it is up to the government to propose and it is up to them as uh, parliament to decide what are the priorities. This is very wrong. The opacity or, you know, kind of uh, vagueness of some aspects of far close on appropriation uh, has been interpreted by parliament as giving them the right to decide on priorities. It doesn't happen in any civilized democracy. It is the government of the day that decides what are the fundamental priorities. That is why they are government. It is the duty of parliament or the National Assembly to appropriate. In most times, in most cases, they can reduce. Uh, it is very rare and quite odd uh, in the mature democracies for Congress or parliament to actually increase the budget which we've seen uh, a couple of times, including some 83, uh, was it 83 billion or so? In the 2018 budget? Exactly. That has been uh, added to the current budget. Uh, in principle, it is wrong. And worse is when Parliament does that in its own self interest, it is the um, the Revenue Mobilization... Uh, and Fiscal uh, Commission. Yes, and Fiscal Commission, that should make that determination. How much is needed, if, if, even if to cashier away legislators that are going, uh, and so on. It is not for them to decide what is in their own interest and what will benefit them directly. In principle, it is bad public administration. And, and that is not, and I think uh, it's, it's a bit difficult because we wouldn't expect them are, are we assuming to, to change that the, things. The only reason why the, the budget has gone up this time around is because of the uh, severance pay that has to be paid to lawmakers. No, I know, I'm never, I'm, I, I didn't say that. No, what I'm saying is that Because you're talking about the revenue mobilization. No, the revenue mobilization, population. anything having to do with personal emolument for legislators. Yes. Particularly, it is just bad form for them to be the ones determining it. Many of them are, are, are my very good friends, and I'm not saying this to spite anyone, but I, I, in principle, in terms of the principle of sound public administration, you don't sit as a, as a judge and jury over your own course. If, if you are personally involved in a proposal that will benefit you in terms of salary and emoluments, let someone else determine that. And in this case, it is the revenue mobilization who should determine how much legislators should be paid and how much should be the severance pay. And of course, they will do that in discussion with them. But it is very odd for them to be cashiering themselves. Okay, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, I mean, mm. this debate over who has power over what has yes. always plagued the mm -hmm. relationship between the executive yeah. and, the, and the National Assembly, regardless of whether or not they're adding severance pay mm -hmm. to the budget. Sure. Now, the National Assembly say, we're not a rubber stamp legislature. Mm -hmm. You cannot bring in a budget in, uh, in to, to us and then expect that it will just come out yes. the same way it came in. There yes. is a reason why the Constitution confers powers on us sure. uh, to look through the budget. Sure. And that controversy has gone on and on. What are your yes. thoughts on it? Well, yes. I mean, the, the Constitution empowers them uh, to look at the budget as well as the power of appropriation. Yes. They, keeps, they keep the purse strings. And fair enough, this is what is expected. But the point we are making is that when it comes to something that will benefit them directly, okay. so that should be done by someone else. Now, and then secondly... Yeah. Can you quickly clarify, sorry to interrupt yeah, you, sir, sure. but can you clarify what you mean by, or what appropriation means to you? 
Uh, because you have said that they can reduce, but it doesn't not, seem not that exactly. they can Appropriation is to, is to approve that the amount can be spent. But not to say no, increase that one because, you know, we think that the needs are more or, you know, we, we want uh, very little left in the excess crude account because so they up the, uh, the assumptions for oil production and oil prices and so on. I, I, I think that that in that route lies danger uh, because I think that uh, in most mature democracies, appropriation simply means authorizing uh, gov the government of the day to take out money to spend for particular expenditures. We can tinker about the material details, but generally it is owed for parliament to actually increase the total ballpark figure of the budget uh, because it is the government that wears the shoes and they know exactly where it pinches. But aren't they a part of government? Aren't they governments in their rights as well? I mean, they also have to answer to the people. That is very true, but we've had the principle of the separation of powers since Montesquieu, and it is very clear that the, the, the role of the executive is to lead and, and to govern and to spend. The role of the parliament is to make laws and to appropriate uh, as, as deemed fit. But I, I think it is a bit strange that that also gives them the power to increase the budget by any amount that they wish. I think, in principle, it is wrong. Mm. Even if it was done responsibly. I mean, whether it was done responsibly is for the Nigerian people to decide. But if it was done in the interest of Nigerians, after yes. all, don't they also re represent they the are interest not the of ones, Nigerians? They are not the ones mobilizing the revenues. Mm. They are not the ones spending. Uh, their role is to oversee the oversight responsibilities, appropriation, make the laws. And if, if I'm president and I come to you and I say, look, Maupe, as, uh, as Speaker of the House or President of the Senate, this is how much I think we have in the kitty, this is how much we can mobilize. And then you tell me, no, 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 increase it by so much amount. It's a bit odd. It's a bit odd. Mm. Because in the end, if it backfires, you run away and say, well, now them, them, you know, and, and it's not good enough. Well, let's leave the controversy now and talk about the actual yeah. figure that has now been approved. Sure. Uh, 8.9 trillion there is mm. what has been signed into law. Yes. Uh, the, presidency, or the president is already talking about some difficulty in implementing and uh, implementing some of their uh, priority projects, sure. uh, so to speak. What are your thoughts on the figures which we appropriated for the 2019 budget? Okay. Um... I was slightly disappointed um, because uh, the figures differ from that, those of last year. Uh, you know, there are a reduction, uh, uh, you know, 8.916, and uh, it's, 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 it's a lower figure than that of last year. Uh, and uh, so we would expect to be making progress, not regressing. More so that the demographics are very clear. Uh, our population increases by 3.2% every year. And uh, so at the minimum, our budget should be increasing by at least 32 to catch up with population demographics. Uh, but again, uh, the government has done something that I, 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 I give them credit for, and that is to try and reduce the deficit. Uh, it's been marginally reduced. Uh, government is uh, applying more restraint on borrowing, it's particularly external borrowing, uh, which is a good thing because you would now realize that up to 60% of government revenue goes to debt servicing. Yeah, but and, external uh, borrowing, we've been told, was never really the issue. The issue has been borrowing locally, uh, which is quite expensive. Well, um, in principle, you, uh, it's less of a problem because the risks are lower. You, you are the government. Uh, you run the country. You are using your local currency. I know that the, 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 the coupon rate is quite high, especially for bonds. Uh, but there are less risks of exchange rate volatilities. 
uh, you're borrowing in a foreign currency, the, rate, the risks are so much higher, even if the rate is lower. Uh, but in the long term, it is much more. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, we are moving in the right direction. That's now more than a passing source of worry for even the Central Bank of Nigeria because, mm. you know, you always have to take in uh, some of the things that have been said by mm. the CBN sure. and, of course, what the, pres what the executive arm of government is proposing, you know, all of this are tied to the economy. Sure. Now they're beginning to mull having a cap Mm -hmm. on on uh, interest rates for, for bonds and I think uh, treasury bills. Yes. Which some people say might be a little problematic. I mean, but when you look at how much the government is paying back on interest and mm. how high the coupon rates are, yes. is, that a good, is that a good move? Well, you know, in principle, I am for market-determined interest rates, uh, not for artificial caps. But I still believe that the rate, the monetary policy rate, which is the benchmark for all other rates, is way too high. And uh, it is undermining, you know, productivity and growth in the real sector because people, I mean, if you are borrowing at, uh, and paying at so much uh, a rate, it's difficult for you to, to, to break even. And, and to really invest in the real sector, which is where we need uh, to create jobs and to see the economy grow. So uh, to that extent, we need to work further on, um, on, on, the, on, the in, on interest rates. You cannot run an economy strictly for the benefit of investors. You run an economy for the benefit of the people, and you run a central bank ultimately for the benefit of the people, not for the benefit of other bankers. Yeah, but the investors are investors. supposed to invest in the real sector. If it's easy for no, them to the, just... No, 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 those sort of investors are not investing in any real sector. No, 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 no. They forget it. They are investing in, in uh, portfolio investments yes. in the stock exchange because they are making money. You know, uh, it's not necessarily in the real sector. I'm talking about SMEs in, in manufacturing, in agriculture. You know, this is the, where the bulk of the majority are. Uh, and, um, you know, when you have big, big uh, multinationals uh, who borrow at a rate that is comfortable for them, uh, it doesn't necessarily improve jobs. It improves profits for investors. Nothing wrong with that. I don't begrudge anybody. We need 100 dangotes, as far as I'm concerned, in this country. We need many more. But let it be on the basis of sound public finance and sound monetary policy, a stable Naira uh, with a good value, um, financial stability, and, and a fair interest rate that is affordable by the small man, uh, the small market woman in Wusi market, in Garki market, in Alaba market. These are the kind of people that we should worry more about. Okay. Now, you've talked about, uh, you know, a part of the budget, which is mm. uh, deficit funding. Yes. And uh, you say that you are happy the government is addressing that. Sure. But looking at our ratio of uh, recurrent versus um, capital. capital expenditure, are you impressed? Well, you know, Maupe, we've made some progress. So, you know, I, I don't want to sit here this morning and be attacking everybody and so on. Uh, we've made some marginal progress. It used to be something like even 18% capital and the rest... Uh, recurrent. Re uh, recurrent. But we've now moved to something like 29%, uh, which is quite remarkable progress. But we are not yet there. Uh, in a country like ours, if we are to make real progress, we, in fact, we should be, in, you know, inverting the, uh, the ratios. It should be at least 30% recurrent and 70% capital, capex. This is what happens in China, in Malaysia, Indonesia, and in the fast-growing economies of How the world. How can we get there? Because I'm sure that, I mean, mm. governments definitely want to spend more on, yes. on capital. I mean, when you do that, there is definitely uh, a very strong proof evidence on mm -hmm. the economy that, you know, it, 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 everybody sees growth, so yeah. to speak. Uh, so why is it so difficult for us to allocate so much to capital expenditure and reduce recurrent? Because we have a very bloated 
public sector that is underperforming. And I worry, I was, I was in Dubai not too long ago, uh, 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 and uh, the, their new airport, and we have a new wing. You just can't compare the two. And even that allocation that we are making, we are not spending it well. There's no real rigorous monitoring and evaluation for the CAPEX, for the capital expenditure projects. There's no proper monitoring. There is no even a prudent approach to actual public finance expenditure framework. We don't have that. So even the quality of the projects are in serious doubt. And, and those implementing them don't have, in my view, the professional competence to, to deliver world-class projects. Uh, I think nothing but the best is good enough for Nigeria. This is what our people expect. Well, this certainly, mm. indeed. Mm. But there must be, I mean, aside the fact that our, you say that our, our civil, our public sector is mm. bloated, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. But some people also argue that we're not making enough money, that that's where the problem lies. That we're not making yes in, if you look progressively mm. over the years yes. we ha since the buhari administration sure. came in we have sure. increased significantly mm -hmm. how much we earmark for our budgets yes. on a yearly basis sure. however that amount still is little when you look yes. at the population of nigeria and yes. perhaps all that translates to uh per head no, uh, you're right Mao, in that in that respect uh we need to raise more revenue there is a revenue crisis, if I may use that, that, that word. Uh, if we are, you are spending something like 60% of government revenue on, on uh, that's non-oil revenue, you're spending it on, on, on servicing your debts, then obviously something's very wrong. And it is more wrong if, for example, a household uh, is borrowing money from the bank at 15% uh, just to buy food. If you are building a new house, I can understand, but just to buy food, just for consumption, it's very terrible. So our public finances are in a mess. We need to work them out rigorously through careful uh, policy work. Uh, we should explore means of raising additional revenue. Uh, I always had this proposal that you know, we don't even know how much we have as government. Government doesn't know, I'm, I'm not in government, but I'm, government doesn't even know how much they have. In Britain, many years ago, the, 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 the king passed a doomsday act uh, that required the, uh, the, the chancellor of the exchequer to take stock of all that the king and the government had. The main idea was to separate what belonged to the king of England from what belonged to the state. But in the end, they ended up having a detailed inventory of all government assets. We need to know how much assets we have. We need to know those assets that can be sold. We need to know those ones that can be packaged and invested to produce and generate more future income streams. And uh, we need to be creative. You know, look, Nigerians are very patriotic people. And if they know that their money will be used properly, honestly, they will be more than happy to contribute towards railways, towards building highways that run through their communities and all that. And they'll be happy to pay. But when they are dealing with a vastly corrupt bureaucracy, uh, it's a turn off. They don't feel that it is their government. They don't feel that the government cares about them. And they don't, they, in fact, they feel shortchanged anytime they have to give anything to government at all. So uh, there needs to be a change in mindset. There needs to be a change in the way we, 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 we manage our public finances. Uh, and uh, we need to be more creative in ways of generating revenue, but also in the way that money is spent and in avoiding waste. Nobody's talking about waste in this country. And I, I suspect there's a lot of waste going on. All this retinue of cars and hangers on and so on and so forth, I, I think a lot of it is a waste of public funds. And we can do a lot to save money. You know. So yes, it is, there's, a revenue, there's a creeping revenue crisis, but at the same time, it's actually our, our fault in many ways that we have not been prudent enough.
mm. and we've not been disciplined enough from the fiscal point of view. What will it take, though? Mm. I, I'm just a little curious, because when you talk about this lack of discipline, some will say that the federal government indeed is a behemoth. It's, it's quite large when you mm -hmm. look at it, and we've talked about over-centralization of government, mm. but then the states also have I mean, they're smaller. They, mm. they have their own budgets as sure, well, sure. which oftentimes we only hear the figures. We yes. rarely see the breakdown. Sure. They also seem to have a problem of government is just government. I mean, nobody mm -hmm. really knows what goes on in, in government. That is very Would true. you say we've addressed the problem of transparency, which some people say if we did, perhaps waste would also be reduced? No, actually, we've gotten very, very much worse than what we were before. At the federal level? Both, both, especially at the federal level. I mean, you need to engage with the civil communities. And they're doing that. I mean, because oftentimes no, 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 you, you, you see I, the budget, uh, well, Ministry of Budget and, and Planning, Ministry of Finance, uh, they are constantly having these meetings, you know, telling journalists how much has been accru has accrued to the Federation accounts, how much has been shared, and things of the sort. No, I'm talking at the highest levels. The highest levels of government, there's a feeling that people are, are excluded. Uh, uh, that there's, there's a sort of exclusivism going on. Uh, and there's no enough engagement with the people, particularly youth and others, because, you know, it is their future. Mm. And, and they are not feeling that they are really part of the whole thing that is, is happening. Uh, and uh, yes, indeed, and for the states, it, it's a little bit better. But, you know, for example, Lagos, where, which was the poster boy, a poster child for success in internally generated revenue, there's still a lot of issues there. Uh, and I admire Lagos, I love the city. Uh, and, uh, of course, the, the Lagosians were very reluctant to, to pay more tax. But when they realized that uh, Fashola was doing a lot of work, they were more than happy to pay. Mm. But there is a problem. The cost of extracting this taxation is one of the highest in the world. Uh, they have invited very dubious uh, private consultants who keep something like 15, almost 20 percent of this tax. I think it is a form of iniquity. And I don't, like, I don't know why, for the life of me, Lagosians tolerate that nonsense. It is their money in a daylight robbery. Employ people, train them. Let the government collect the tax, not private consultants. In France, they have whole schools dedicated to, to training people in public finance and uh, tax administration. And these are the people that you should set about to, to collect your taxes, not some iniquitous and corrupt uh, private consultants. How would you suggest we review every budget to ensure that we've made the most of what was earmarked for a year, for each year? Number one, we should try as much as possible to go back to the January date. A budget should start at the beginning of the year. This chaos is more than enough. People are fed up with it. Uh, on both sides, a lot of haggling and so on, going out to and fro. We need to stop that. We need to find a better way to work together so that the budget kicks off on 1st January. Budget is too important just to be toyed and politicized beyond what is reasonable. Number two, we need to put better mechanisms for monitoring and evaluation and for rigorous implementation. And there should be more engagement with the public so that the public know what is being spent and how it has been spent and, you know, uh, progress in implementation. And we should, three, work towards inverting the ratio between recurrent and budget. We should work towards, in the medium term, getting at least 50-50. 50 percent uh, recurrent, 50 percent capex, and work towards that, towards even making it uh, the capital expenditure more dominant. And finally, I really think that in the long term, we should go back to the traditions of economic development planning, not this two-year budget financial forecast that is used to now anchor the annual budget. We need to have a five-year economic development plan. When we had it in this country, it was very, very successful.
And out of that, develop the, a kind of uh, financial forecast, and out of that, develop the annual budget. That way, we can achieve so much more in this country. It's a fine place to leave it, and we thank you this morning for your contributions. You. Dr. Badaya Milafia is a development economist and also a former deputy governor at the Central Bank of Nigeria.